Hello learners, welcome to the third session of the uh, October month's current affair for prelims 2020. Now in this session, uh, just a reminder, in the session 1 we did the indexes, reports, some random affairs. Then in session 2, a long session in two parts, part 1 and part 2, we cover the whole governance thing under these seven different heads. Why so many heads again to reiterate that, to give a more structural uh, way to uh, current affairs so that when you at the end you want to read some compilations it will be very easy for you just to go to their structure and just finish it out right so in international affairs also uh, that's a very important component of the current affair because the static that we read for the mains that is not very much relevant as as with respect to prelims some of the common things can come for example <clears throat> Uh, Indus, uh, Indus Water Treaty, something like that. But more of the uh, international affair in the current, in the uh, prelims examination is a more of a current affair centric things. And some very weird and very random questions have come in the international relations. So, how we are dividing our international relations, we will be covering under the four heads. First head will be the country specific news. Country specific news, we will, we uh, in this session, we will see the examples also. Uh, that means the news that are specific to few countries for example we'll see italy's news some us news that that become relevant because they have a global implications or they can become a potential question just to avoid any exclusion error so we'll be covering a very specific country specific news also right uh, next is international institutions everybody knows that's a very important thing and also the separate compilations are also available um, in the March or February month from the different institutes. So, uh, we are covering that within our own monthly discussion so that if you do these uh, these things, so ultimately you can just take out these portions, so you don't have to read compilation again. The whole point of uh, this uh, segregation is to about this duplicity, uh, duplic uh, duplication of efforts that we do. First time we did everything in the monthly affair, then Later on, we do all the compilation parts. So, to avoid all this, the current affairs series of Amrita is there, right? Third part is summits and initiatives. All the variety of summits that, for example, we'll see mayor summit and uh, future investment summit, different, different summits on the October month. And lastly, what are the bilateral things that were in the news in the October month, okay? Um, don't worry if we skip a few, um, if something is skipped, for example, if you do not find something, we'll cover it up. We, as we told you, nothing will be skipped, but uh, these are the most relevant ones from the Octobers and the, the anything missed, we are also looking so that nothing can be missed. So, we will cover that in uh, later on. In the separate heading, separate uh, uh, heading, we can cover the remaining ones, okay. So, let us start the international thing. First thing, country specific news. First news we see Operation Kaila Muller. Muller. Okay, so what is this? US announced the death of the Islamic uh, IS chief, that is self-proclaimed chief Abu Bakr al Baghdadi. So he was killed in an overnight raid by the US military forces in Syria. So um, as we know that uh, Syria and Iraq are the hub of the, uh, they, they were the cradle of the uh, ISIS, and finally this US chief, like the Ab Abbottabad. Uh, mission of the us they did the same for him also so it was officially the code name is what is to be uh, remembered the code name everybody like got to the news that uh, that abu bakar al baghdadi was killed but the, the official code name is this one operation kaila muller so who was kaila muller just for additional information she was a american human right activist so she um, she was taken captive in the Syria uh, after leaving Doctors Without Borders Hospital and uh, she was captured by ISI and ultimately she was repeatedly as it, it says there she was reported that she was repeatedly raped and finally she was killed also. So on her uh, in her memory or in her name the operation code name was named after her. What is the place uh, the mapping thing? Uh, we could have done in the location part also but more relevant i find more relevance in the international affairs so uh, this is syria right so aleppo uh, this is the place where uh, barisha area it is where the strikes were carried out how he was killed very interesting as in he was escaping the raids and he put a suicide bombs on him and he um, bombed himself up okay so that is the whole important news from the prelim perspective next is Next news is uh, 
ओल्ड सिटी हैज बीन फाउंड बाई दी आर्क्योलॉजिस्ट इसराइल आर्क्योलॉजिस्ट हैवन वील्ड द रिमेन्स ऑफ अ फाइव थाउजेंड ईयर ओल्ड सिटी नेम एज इन इसथुरे in like these are the very these are the names from the different countries right so for our purpose we can pronounce that because ultimately we have to take it down right so the discovery which includes the fortification a ritual temple and the biggest from its era and that's why it becomes a bit significant that this city has been uh, excavated and uh, it is 5000 years old so that's why it becomes a bit relevant next uh, news is uh, web tax in italy now a very controversial tax too much in news uh, italy has approved the new tax on the digital companies as a part of a 2020 draft budget the levy will oblige the firms like facebook google amazon to pay 3% levy on the internet transaction now in india also now the the, the regulation on these companies for example recently 2 uh, to 3 months back government has come up with regulation on the whatsapp right that uh, they should limit the forward things and whatsapp has done so because of spread of the fake news similarly amazon is too much in news because uh, too much strikes too much uh, protest against the uh, deep discounts given by these companies amazon flipkart right by especially by the small traders so they are not able to compete with them and uh, people buy everything from these websites Um, so the and plus the next news is uh, uh, last year question also came that RBI uh, data localization. So that is your homework that you should do on your end. That guidelines for the data localization, right? So that is why under uh, current news is web tax in Italy only. So Italy court, uh, Italy courts controversial with adoption of the digital revenue tax. Okay. Next is a missile of the USA. Just uh, uh, name, for example, we have Agni, we have Prithvi. So there is intercontinental ballistic missile of US that is Minuteman three. It has the range of around nine. This uh, more than ninety seven hundred kilometer range is there. Okay, ballistic missile. So your homework is to um, get to know about different different. Uh, we will uh, see how much missile that we can cover in the defense portion in the coming session. Uh, but uh, overall from a static portion you should know what is the difference between ballistic missiles and the other missiles how ballistic missile um, is not guided and uh, different uh, indian project for coming up with different different missiles right so that is the country very small session we going to have uh, more important things from pre perspective that's we are doing so we have seen the four facts now we move to the international institutions they are more of a current static in nature they are not current current in nature as we have discussed the how i categorize the current affairs so current static in nature so we will see the organization which are in the news and we will try to cover with the for example october is the first month they are covering next month will be covering november month then we'll go back to the june month and uh, in this whole series we'll try to cover almost all the important international institutions under this heading okay under third session and the international institutions uh, part so if you want to see a particular institution or you want to read only about the institution just go to the third session of every month and go to the link of the uh, uh, second link in the international part that is international institutions okay so the first institution that we are seeing that is who world health organization uh, its headquarter is geneva switzerland majority of the un uh, that's a un specialized agency you should also see in google uh, the name of the un specialized agency right there are more than 17 around agencies which are un specialized agency so it is one of the un specialized agency geneva so how you remember their headquarters just remember that everyone has a headquarters in geneva and remember the exceptions the same trick i have given you for the reports and indexes of india also just remember by default that everybody is everything is given by niti ayo and just remember the exceptions okay same you can do for this also for example fao has headquarter many of people you remember fao headquarter in the room icj has headquarter in uh, hague palace okay so <clears throat> who so what uh, member of who 194 members all member state of united nation except for cook island and new we will see the location of new also again in news because of one more reason we'll see uh, funding contribution of the member states and outside donors the work it does okay for example corona virus currently the in the february month the news of corona virus is too much right in china so who has come up with the advisory against the 
uh, for the uh, prevention or what steps one should take so that one should not be contaminated with this particular virus. So uh, about the organization, few things, World uh, Health Assembly, so it will be the legislative and supreme body of WHO, it meets annually and reviews the various work of WHO, it appoints the director general for five years. So he will take the day to day operations and it will take up the legislative part for the same things every organization you will see the same part one will be executive and one will be legislative so executive will do the day to day function and legislative will be the highest for example parliament in india they will do the law making part but the implementation part will be done by the executives okay what are the publication of who uh, different publications when the different months will come we will discuss in the first session the international reports but uh, different publications of who world health report world health statistics Blue, uh, bulletin of world health organizations from the name itself you can guess that it, they are from the who and reports also you just remember those reports which uh, do not intuitively comes that uh, they are from this particular institutions right for example ease of doing business now everybody knows world bank but uh, logistics report and uh, this competitiveness report innovation index happiness index so in that things you have to learn uh, so, in the 13th, uh, 2018, 13 general program uh, GPW of uh, uh, WHO, general program of work, one of the initiatives of WTO, they have adopted one of the targets, that is triple billion targets. Okay, so what is triple billion targets? Now, that is important for your uh, prelim perspective also. The specific question can be asked the uh, recently news triple billion targets. So, question can be asked who has launched it? Very easy question. Second question, what are these 3 billion targets, right? So, if you see in this, the 3 billion targets are a healthier population. So, 1 billion more people enjoying health, better health and well-being. 1 billion people are more protected from the health emergencies. And 1 billion more people benefiting from the universal health coverage. So, 3 billion project is there from the WHO and they are trying to do this, right? Right? So, confusing thing is for example one uh, your homework is uh, get to know about 1 billion uprising so when these things are there they become a potential uh, prelims question 1 billion uprising right okay so this is the triple billion target next is I, uh, iora indian ocean rim association first of all uh, why these institutions these uh, ocean uh, institutions are getting in too much prominence and they in the world affair they are getting prominence and also similarly they will get prominence in the prelims also why right? because of so many things for example for india it is the maritime security we are focusing on the maritime security uh, the idea of indo-pacific is too much gaining ground the quad thing indo-pacific um, india in the modi ji's speech at shangri la dialogue when he called for free open and uh, prosperity free Indo-Pacific, US also focusing on Indo-Pacific to contain China, right? The divergence between the Indian approach and the US approach and the Japanese approach. So, that is why too much news, Indian Ocean especially. So, keep that, keep Indian Ocean, uh, read Indian Ocean very well for your, uh, not only for your international relation, but also internal security for mains and also for the essay also. The question on Indian Ocean can come on the essay also. From the prelim perspective, the institutions and the initiative, for example, IORA is there, IONS is there, Indian Ocean Naval Symposium is there. We will try to cover that. So, IONS can come. Okay. So, in this way, we will cover that. So, uh, now coming back to the, new, um, the institutions. So, it is an international organization consisting of the coastal states bordering the Indian Ocean. So, it's a tripartite. First of all, it's a tripartite in nature. For example, it not only government, but also the business and the academia. So, this can be a option. One, two, three option. This can be one of the options. It's a tripartite. That's not an intergovernmental uh, organization. Intergovernmental means between government and government, but also they're including the government, the business, the academia. The secretariat is at Mauritius. Okay member countries 22 around members now recently maldives joined it more importantly two mem two countries that are not member are Myanmar and pakistan though they are share the border of indian ocean india is obviously the member of this right so if you see the location here for example india uh, this is pakistan it is not there okay i'll change the pen so that uh, it's more visible yeah. so 
this is pakistan not here and myanmar they are conspicuous by their absence right so the, if the question comes they will ask the same question so which of the country pakistan and myanmar will be in the options okay so just remember that and you can see all the members of this from here to there almost everyone is the member these two are not the members okay don't remember the dialogue partners or the observer status they are not important the important part is only the member states these green ones are the member uh, the blue ones are the member state this one is this one is just dialogue partner so these one is not important these ones are not too much important right us is also a, a dialogue partner okay this one second yeah so next organization that we see world economic forum now uh, we have seen one of the reports of world economic forum in the first session itself right world competitiveness index so it's a non-profit organization it is headquartered in geneva but sometimes meetings are held at the davos right so it's established 1971 after lpg reforms after 1990s when the globalization and the rise of the capitalism against the communism communism went down the capitalism went up hence the significance of these institutions become too much right uh, our prime minister also addressed the world economic forum i've discussed that uh, so it is international organization for the public private cooperation and the forum engages the foremost political business and other leader society to shape the global regional and indus industrial agendas okay as i discussed one of the reports of this globalization 4.0 so it become a think tank type thing if you go to the world economic forum you'll kind of find some good fodder points for your essay and also for your optional also okay for example global globalization 4.1 globalization is in your slivers and many of the essay questions are also asked now we come to the international solar alliance now uh, first of all why it is important because recently three days ago the economic survey was released and uh, they have specifically mentioned in the chapter volume 2 chapter uh, climate change sdg indexes so they mentioned that the efforts of india taken on the uh, at the front of the renewable energy front so it is one of the premier initiative taken by india at the international level so international solar alliance so uh, it was launched at the indian african summit uh, before the 2015 conference at the paris so paris before the paris pledge right so paris pledge becomes very important uh, that is important from our perspective you must be knowing so that is why international solar alliance also has the importance why for india because it is the first is headquartered in the gurugram haryana not in delhi uh, because it is the first major organization to have headquarters in india uh, what are the objective global deployment of 1000 uh, gigawatt of solar uh, generation capacity and mobilization of investment over 1000 billion into the solar energy by 2030 so 1 trillion dollar investment they want in the solar energy and uh, it is entered into force in 2017 details now extend to the now what are the how, how the membership has changed it is now extended to all the members of united Nations members earlier it was limited to the people from the uh, to the countries that are fully or partially between the tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn okay so now every un member can become its member so that amendment has taken place okay uh, one more thing i want to discuss with respect to prelim preparation that keep in mind all the energy for example in the next one i'll discuss Just keep in mind all the energy resources for example which especially which are future oriented because that has been one of the major concerns of the global leaders whether it present also oil and in the future for example shale gas they have asked question twice on the shale gas so in the future you can expect question on the other resources of the uh, other resources of the energy whether it be biofuels so india has passed a biofuel policy uh, biofuels or whether it be uh, that is flammable ice recently too much in use nat uh, natural gas hydrates so read about those if we get current affair we'll cover that obviously and somewhere over the line we will cover that natural gas hydrates so that's very important okay so india's contribution coming back to the class india's contribution to international solar alliance so we have committed something so all these things are mentioned indian renewable energy development agency and solar energy corporation of india uh, both have committed 1 million each and they will be co uh, coordinating because india also have some uh, indian national solar mission right under napcc so all these things i know that's too much uh, for the current affair but that's all part of it so under napcc we have a national solar mission so our commitment under national solar missions and international solar runs are all in the congruence 
we'll cover that uh, some place NAPCCB also okay next organization that is <clears throat> we are discussing that is Asian Development Bank so established in 1966 uh, regional development bank headquartered in uh, Manila France uh, details official you um, it has the official United Nation observer status also now um, this Asian Development Bank what uh, other things uh, other prelims things you can keep in mind while revising the chronology of the banks can be asked for example 1966 is ADB you need to know the World Bank you need to know about AIIB you need to know about uh, ADB on uh, that is NDB so the question can be asked to arrange them uh, uh, chronologically according to the years of the establishment okay so keep that in mind while you are reading these institutions we will be covering those institutions slowly like adb here we will cover somewhere niib and ndb we are not covering all because that's it's not a compilation class it's a class for the october current affair so adb what is the motto fighting poverty in asia and pacific formation uh, just one second uh, because yeah so fighting poverty in asia and pacific formation we have seen uh, headquarter in we have seen uh, Manina, uh, Malina the membership of 67 country recently uh, 68th member has been added we will see that the region served is Asia Pacific so it's the name is Asian but all the things are not like all the countries are not from Asia some Pacific countries are also there we will see that so if we see this is from the uh, uh, Asian Development Bank website only so if we see just one second yeah so what it is for its vision mission you can see in the website in the on the slide itself uh, coming back to the like i cropped that the single portion so 67 members out of 48 are from the asia and pacific right if you see the structure so uh, you can see no, uh, 19 are non-regional members so if that is important the ownership profile highest is japan's and us combined you can see 15.6 and 15.6 next is prc china then india so india is fourth in number in asian development bank okay oh, no, uh, yes asian development bank. okay next is adb welcomes new as the this con uh, this uh, country we have seen who it is not a member of who but uh, adb welcomes new as the newest member so uh, what is the uh, location of this nation just one second yeah so location of this nation is here in oceania near the in the um, like western part of the western of the australia above the new zealand okay so just remember that in the south pacific ocean because sometimes they ask these they will give the name of the island uh, tell them where is the location atlantic pacific indian ocean something like that next next institution that you're going to see that is world meteorological organization so headquarter in geneva switzerland uh an intergovernmental organization i told you the difference between intergovernmental and the other organization that we have seen was iora that was not an intergovernmental organization because that have the partnership of the academy and the business as well so membership of 193 member states so detailed specialized agency of united nations uh, member of united nations development group uh, the other members of this uh, wmo okay the geneva thing just remember the geneva thing right that uh, all the by default they are geneva and uh, just remember the exceptions next thing we'll see the body of the fatf that is international cooperation review group because it was in news with respect to pakistan okay somewhere uh, over the line we will discuss about fatf the uh, the blue list the, the gray list the black list but here it is in news because october month uh, the news came that uh, fatf is likely to keep pakistan the gray list but the issue uh, strong warnings to it so it is the yeah so it is the fatf international cooperation review uh, group it has discussed pakistan's action for countering terrorist financing and anti-money laundering operation and the final discussion is due to be held on the friday so it is uh, fatf's body this one international cooperation review group now from the name itself it is not uh, sure that it can review can be they can relate it to the nuclear thing they can relate it to the um, different different other organization but just remember that it is related to the fatf okay so it recommends the actions to the FATF on the on which basis FATF later takes on the action. International Cooperation Review Group. Okay. 
that is the tough part of the international relation because there are so many of the institutions so many of the um, different different parts of the organization and more importantly which are in the news and which are relevant for the india those ones we have to remember right uh, next the uh, next the third heading we are going to see the summits and the initiatives so the first one is drone innovator in network summit so it is organized by world economic forum under the ages of the ministry of civil aviation you can see the ministry of uh, minister of civil aviation recently he has put the requested on the twitter to ban kunal kamra right <laughs> so so it was the drone summit uh, held with the partnership with world economic forum why is it so what uh, why it is started by world economic forum to hasten and contribute to the healthy drone policy in the need of legislation so the policy with respect to drones because drones can have a mm -hmm. A very diverse socio-economic uh, uh, impact on the people for example in africa one of the drone agency of the us is working to deliver medicines into the remotest part of the africa so uh, world economic forum as a think tank as a institution as a global institutions is working with the different different national government to come up with the very sound and the very robust mechanism for the introduction of the drones into their economy and society right Next, very important, uh, NAM summit. Now, NAM itself has become relegated in Indian foreign policy, especially after the 1991, when the whole uh, bipolar world collapsed and the era of unipolar world became. So, that is the reason you can see here, it is the second time in a row that Mr. Modi has skipped the summit. And that goes to show that NAM is not currently featuring into the prominence of our foreign policy. However, if we write about the golden errors of our golden uh, points of our foreign policy, NAM is one of them because we were the world leader. Even after the independence itself, we were having a lot poor socio-economic indicators, but still on the diplomatic table, we were recognized as a world leader because we choose not to align with the uh, global powers and we chose to remain non-aligned. Right? So, what you have to remember, 18 summit happened in Baku capital of Azerbaijan you need to remember the capitals of the other uh, uh, countries from that Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, um, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan because they can confuse you with the uh, different different capitals. So theme upholding the Bandung principles to ensure the concerned concerted and adequate response to the challenges of the contemporary world. What are the Bandung principles? They were agreed upon in the Bandung conference. So, just, uh, just to see, uh, the 10 principles of Bandung were proclaimed at the conference were the guiding principle of the NAM. Just remember the 10 principles, the question can come, the 10 principles of Bandung recently in news is related to. So, they can ask you different, different questions. Asian they can ask because it's in Indonesia. So, they can relate that it was agreed upon it in the time in the um, uh, Asian summit, Indo-Asian summit or something like that. Okay. So, they were proclaimed at the conference for guiding principle of the NAM. They were attended by the, uh, yep, Mr. our Prime Minister has escaped, but our Vice President has, um, was there in the summit. History, if we beat a bit of history, we are seeing, the moment has its origin in Asia, Africa conference in the Bandung, this Bandung, Indonesia, right. It is the first conference in the Belgrade uh, in 1961 under the leadership of India, Yugoslavia, Egypt, Ghana and Indonesia. Okay. It has 120 members as of 2018. It has 120 members. The policy of non-alignment was based upon the five principle of the punch shield. Okay. So, this was midterm ministerial meeting of NIM that is Baku, Azerbaijan. Okay. Next is uh, future investment initiative. For that, our Prime Minister uh, went to the Saudi Arabia and had other meetings. We will also cover the India-Saudi initiative and the factual part in the last part of our discussion. So, future investment initiative, initiative by the Saudi Crown Prince to diversify the uh, um, kingdom's economy, reduce its dependence on the petroleum products. Now, as you know, the Middle Eastern countries are too much reliant on the oil. That is why too much... Uh, problems also in their uh, economy and their society because every time the oil fluctuates they have issue similar thing happen in venezuela also right so that is the plan, uh, the that is the plan vision 20 vision 2030 is been announced by the um, crown prince uh, mohammed bin salman because the king is not uh, he is very old king abdullah 
so uh, he has this vision of 2030 so they want to diversify their economy right so diversify their economy means their economy is too much reliant on the um, petrol products now they want to diversify into tourism they want to diversify into the it hub and in that area india's uh, importance increases for them in one way in a layman terms we are only dependent on saudi that saudi giving up the oil no they are also uh, trying to get India because they were the traditional, you need to understand that also. International affairs, prelim perspective is not only, only about uh, cramming the fact. If you know a bit of uh, background, uh, if you have read the mains international affair also, it will be helpful. So, uh, the Middle Eastern countries are trying to diversify their portfolio. Earlier, they were the robust, they are said to be the brother nations of the uh, Pakistan, both UAE and Saudi. So, if you see the Saudi, if you see Pakistani debate, uh, they say that our brothers like Saudi and UAE are not coming to help us. For example, Saudi prince, uh, we will discuss that Saudi prince in the meeting with the, uh, Mr. Modi, he proclaimed uh, in the um, on the final declaration, in the final uh, statement by the both the side, it came that in, uh, internal issue should be discussed internally, one should not interfere into the other uh, uh, things. So, it was a tactic approval or tactic support toward the India's 370 thing was going on. Article 370, too much Pakistani protest, hue and cry by Pakistan and the international forum. But Saudi tactically supported India in that, not formally, but tactically. So that is why Saudis are also dependent on India because they want to diversify, they want to invest in, in our country. They want to uh, take the IT hub, they want to invest in their education, healthcare system the Aadhaar system, so many things, IT initiatives of India. So, the more collaboration will be there. So, that is why this Indi the significance of India for the uh, Middle Eastern countries. Okay. So, uh, details are uh, FII brings together this for future investment initiative brings together policy maker, investor and global expert. This year, Prime Minister delivered a keynote what next for India and why it is considered as the Davos in the desert. As I discussed now, World Economic Forum and similarly, Davos in the desert, this is a future investment initiative. One more thing I was discussing about the Middle Eastern country, same thing is for UAE also. UAE is also diversifying itself as in too much investment into tourism because they know eventually the oil will run out. So that is why the buildings like Burj Khalifa and other buildings, they have a great tourist attraction. Very small country, but they have more tourists than India. Right. So, that is why, th because of the reason that they are investing too much into the, um, investing too much uh, into tourism and the Dubai especially, UAE, okay. Next, this is the summit the, in the Saudi Arabia, you can see. Next, City Business Alliance, City Business Climate Alliance. Now, C C40 summit in uh, 1920. So, a step towards uh, developing a successful collaboration. Now, Alliance will enable members and CEOs to collaborate and translate global climate commitment into practical action that works in the city, especially cities is mentioned, right? Because cities are not only the hot, hotbed of the uh, development growth, but also the hotbed of the pollution, whether it be air pollution, whether it be contribution to the global, um, that urban heat islands, contribution to the global warming. These cities are, that is why sustainable component has to come in these cities. That is why we have a smart city mission also. To make a sustainable cities. As SDG, which SDG is related to it? SDG 11. Just remember that. Huh? So, uh, why it was in news? Uh, it was in Copenhagen uh, in two October 2019. That, we are, that is why we are discussing the October current affairs. Why it was in the news? Because Kejriwal uh, was supposed to attend this and he was denied the permission by the government. Kejriwal was denied the permission. What uh, argument government has given? Uh, argument given by the government was that Kejriwal is not the mayor, he is the CEO. But uh, Ahmadi party, BJP, you know, right? Too much fight. So, but he still speaks with the video conferencing and he talks about his initiatives he has taken in the Delhi Odd even initiative and the other initiatives uh, focusing on health, Mohalla clinic. So, so, Delhi is going to joining in 37, uh, Delhi joining 37 other cities from the word in uh, clean air cities declaration. You can also 
this question can also come the clean air cities declaration so it was launched at this summit just remember that okay so this clippings so these newspaper clippings will help you to relate more with the current affair facts right okay so the next news is joint declaration of peace and friendship so i have seen we have discussed in the first uh, session that uh, nobel peace prize was given in the to the prime minister of ethiopia right abe ahmed so uh, the same uh, the declaration was joint declaration of peace and friendship between these two countries we have discussed bit about what was the rivalry 20 year war and uh, that war has brought about a lot of misery and the misery to the people of these two countries so finally putting an end to it that is the name of the joint declaration of peace and friendship coming to the next point indian economic su summit world economic forums 33rd indian economic summit took place in new delhi so that is world economic forum so what how can you make notes if you want to make yourself notes so just remember world economic forum the static portion then the initiative so 1 2 3 that kind of initiative you can do right so one is economic summit the one earlier we did the economic world economic forum other summit so uh, for example cvl drone policy drone thing so just make a list of it so that when you revise you know all the things of world economic forum in when a one go so uh, hosted in collaboration with Conf uh, cii confederation of indian industry theme is innovative uh, innovating for india strengthening the south asia and impacting the world this indian economic summit okay next the last portion of our discussion that is bilateral relationship the fourth thing okay so first is india saudi arabia relation india and saudi arabia just opposite colors right india in uh, green and that in orange just for okay india and saudi arabia to form a that is a step they have taken to form a strategic council so they will form a bilateral strategic partnership council india is the fourth country with which saudi is having such council we'll see that Cause, uh, the uh, council will include the multiple sections involving external affair niti ayog and counterpart in the saudi arabia so india is the fourth country as i mentioned it will have two parallel tracks uh, is yeah, this strategic partnership council as narendra modi announces the formation of indian saudi strategic partnership council so it will have two parallel tracks first is political security culture and society and second is economy and investment so economy and investment part will be taken care of the commerce side piyush goel right india's commerce minister and saudi's energy minister and the political economy will be taken by the foreign ministers of the both the countries so it will be have two parallel tracks just remember that india and um, saudi have this strategic partnership council so indian saudi arabia relationship more, more details on this as i have discussed they want to invest in india so one of the big investment is aramco uh, aramco uh, invest decided to partner a project in ratnagiri refinery and petrochemical projects in maharashtra so just remember that that saudi is having partnership with india on this right saudi has identified india as one of the kingdoms eight strategic partner countries under the vision 2030 that is vision 2030 that i have discussed of king uh, crown prince salman right that also includes one of the portion of the modernizing saudi arabia um, getting some conservative elements out of the saudi arabia and that is why one of the initiative that you must have heard in the last year they've given uh, started uh, the women were given permission to have to start driving also they can drive next in news kartarpur corridor so between india and pakistan it will facilitate the indian pilgrims to visit the gurdwara kartarpur sahib so first of all if you see the mapping thing just one second so this one is in india dera baba nayak and this one is kartarpur so this is the india pakistan border so that is why this corridor was needed to connect this corridor has been in uh, demand for too many so many years demand from both the sides both the sides of the things right this is punjab pakistan area pa punjab in pakistan is also there what one more thing to remember is that it crosses through ravi river from the map it is very clear right so ravi river just remember that because you may be knowing everything from the perspective of the international relation the facts and everything but you may miss from the geography perspective okay so corridor is built to connect as i've discussed these two this one second yeah these two baba uh, dera baba nayak in gurdaspur and gurdwara sahib in kartarpur the final resting place of sikhism founder gurudev guru nanak okay So Kartarpur Pact validity is five years under the Land Port Authority Act of India, and so BSF, BSF, which is a border guarding force of uh, force for uh, India Pakistan border, India Bangladesh border, is the designated force for the guarding the border gates through which the pilgrims will cross the Pakistan. India has earlier expressed what are the issues India 
कंसर्न्स दैट कॉरिडोर कुड बी यूज बाय पाकिस्तानी जनरेट एंटी इंडिया प्रोपोगेंडा लाइक खालिस्तान कॉज सो दैट वाज वन ऑफ द कंसर्न्स बाय इंडिया इट कैन बी टेकन एज वन ऑफ द पॉजिटिव्स ऑफ इंडिया पाकिस्तान रिलेशनशिप व्हेन एवरीथिंग इज गोइंग साउथ एज इन नो नो टॉक्स विद नो टॉक्स विद टेररिज्म एंड द रिपीटेड सीज वायर वायलेशन बाय द पाकिस्तानीज then this uh, kartarpur corridor becomes a ray of hope for them right ray of hope for future india pakistani collaboration the cultural front the as we say na the boundaries divides but the culture unites people okay so that can be one of the reasons uh, the religion can also be what can said to be one of the factors in international relationship how the religion how the religious sentiments of the people has brought two countries to two hostile neighbors at the um, at the table right next is very important uh, that is second uh, informal summit of india and china that is uh, that was held in india mallapuram summit or chennai connect the name is chennai connect also just remember that okay so chennai connect uh, they can ask the question on not on the informal summit not on the mallapuram they can just ask a question on the chennai connect so second informal summit after the first one at the wuhan in 2018 so historical relevance why the chinese connection with mallapuram Uh, so they had a some sort of these chinese have some sort of the security pact with pallava dynasty so in the year century in, that involved a pallava king and they he promised him them to help the chinese who were conscious of the tibet uh, rising the power of tibet you see tibet which has they have emerged as a strong power posing a threat to the china so that is the historical relevance one of the more historical relevance uh, is that uh, one of the few uh, chinese traveler visited this mallapuram areas for uh, collecting some buddhist transcripts and all uh, okay the one who has uh, uh, established the zen buddhism in china um, he has also come from this place mallapuram in chennai area to the china so that is the historical connection between the chinese connect between this place and the uh, mallapuram so what are the events they first of all they witness a uh, Uh, kala kshetra program so it is a uh, presented by one of the foundation devoted to the teaching of bharatanatyam and carnatic music so they have attended this uh, summit mr modi went uh, wore a lungi uh, so in the china so what are the outcomes these are very important very important i'll say because this can be asked so they have established a sister state relation relationship sister state so the collaboration of state for example tamil nadu and the Fujian province of China. We will see the location of Fujian province also. So a sister state relationship is there, a state to state relationship, right? It seeks to build a manufacturing partnership between India and China, so as to um, if India can uh, connect more on the level of trade, more can gain more of the experience of China to for the success of Indian make in India or something. Okay. Next is to deliver seventy seventy years of diplomatic relationship between the two nations. Year twenty twenty will be designated years of the. india china cultural people to people exchange so 70 years will be celebrated in 2020 so that is why china becomes an important portion for the current affairs from main and pre perspective there was no formal discussion over the jnk so that is an important point though there was no formal discussion uh, over jnk but because as i discussed in october month 370 was a very hot hot issue and china was having some closed door meetings in unsc still recently they also had a closed door meeting in unsc but there was no formal uh, discussion of jnk issue that also goes to show that india took his stand that uh, no one should interfere in our um, internal matter secondly china also realizes that and the pakistan should not come into bit, come in between the more collaboration between india and china especially china from chinese perspective more on the trade front more on the strategic front because china also want because china is not leading the um a wagon of the globalization so as to say because the three events right first of all 2008 crisis the us and western power residing and the china taking on the bre project bri project belt and road uh, initiative orob so these three events goes to show that china is now leading the wagon of the uh, globalization led leading the uh, wagon of the uh, multi multilateralism wto climate summit when the us and the western power are not very uh, enthusiastic about those things hence china also wants to have more partners so cannot play india pakistan relation pakistan is, is a small country for china important but very small country so does not want to make pak india hostage to that pakistan issue right so that is why these informal summits are important 
last year informal summit was happen on the backdrop of the doklam issue so that is why these informal summits are very good as in um, they are they help to diffuse the tension more uh, um, communication among the world leaders right so it helps to um, solve these small small issues so this is the location of the fuyan province it can be asked because obviously as i told you it is very important the outcome of the informal summit so this is mallappuram we will uh, read about the significance of mallappuram in the art and culture section of the current affairs we will briefly will do and rest of the thing i expect you to read from your uh, culture whatever the source you are following for the culture right so they are having the coconut in the um, in front of the so beautiful image right so that's a world heritage site i had discussed we will discuss that a bit in the current affair section uh, in the current affair art and culture section and the uh, rest is uh, you see in the your contemporary static one more thing you can is important 2 plus 1 formula that is been um, um projected by the china the, to have india china plus 1 approach 2 plus 1 formula any way it can be asked it can be it will be asked in the 2 plus 1 formula only that uh, this formula is been used uh, for what so they have proposed chinese have proposed that for example working in the countries like nepal sri lanka myanmar so if we can work in a three party settle three party uh, meetings we can have india china and that third country so it will give more collaboration and there will be reduced conflicts will be there so that has been one of the proposed things is there not too much uh, taken up by the government but still th that is in the current affairs in the newspapers it is mentioned similarly this uh, uh, connectivity corridor very important between uh, so many agreements have been signed landmark agreement has been signed between china and Nepal. Just remember the trans Himalayan multi dimensional connectivity between China and Nepal, not India and Nepal. Just remember that trans Himalayan multi dimensional connectivity. So, sometimes referred as China and trans Himalayan network, an economic corridor between Nepal and China as part of BRI, China's BRI. The strategic embrace of China of these countries. So, why uh, trans Himalayan multi, -di multi dimensional connectivity project is uh, important? Because earlier the Nepal was totally dependent on India for the connectivity. Now China wants to make inroad into the Nepal. So and also Nepal also wants to reduce its strategic uh, uh, dependence on the India for these things. Right. Nepal also wants to have an independent foreign policy that is not too much India dependent. Okay. So they are also looking to have a um, diversify their uh, diversify their uh, options so that is why china and india and nepal relations are on high so that china is to help Chap uh, nepal build a dry port at uh, tatopani and some uh, roads will be built from nepal to china right so that china is a land uh, nepal is a landlocked country right so that is more in your mains perspective that why nepal significance of india and how china is getting too much into nepal and these agreements can be examples uh, which you can quote uh, with respect to Chinese incurring too much into the uh, Nepal. Okay. You can see China building too much uh, roads, highways, airports in the Nepal. And obviously, in the, the India, the famous quote, right? China, in, India promises and China delivers. So, that is one of the, that is one of the, uh, issue of our foreign policy especially in the neighborhood first we have promised so many things but we cannot deliver it and that is why the countries become pessimistic and they are uh, they rely on the china let's china will do because they will bring money they will bring their uh, works uh, they will bring their expertise and they will do the work very quickly okay next is india bangladesh relation the last uh, topic of the day i think so uh, the the Bangladeshi Prime Minister visited in India. One of the uh, uh, important agreement from the prelim perspective was signing for the water connectivity. So they to use this Chagogram and Mongla ports in Bangladesh, not in India, for movement of goods to and fro from the India. So improve the logistics of India, especially connectivity of the northeast. India's look west look uh, act east policy. Sorry, look act east policy. So you can relate everything to this. India Bank neighborhood first logistics all these that is why these agreements are important plus india's in, in the india's uh, willingness to invest in in the waterways so these are the locations 
these are the locations if you see that is mongla port and this is chatogram port what are the other ports uh, kolkata haldia port just one second yes yeah. yeah kolkata and haldia dock so if we zoom it up so you can see we have mongla port yeah, this is bangladesh this is bangladesh and this is chatogram port okay so now these two ports uh, they have signed the agreement that uh, these will help in india indian shipping things so and or most important for the especially for the northeast any production here productivity any uh, manufacturing setup here it can directly go from there earlier it has to come from this route the, to this route so the at lost of uh, cost will be saved and uh, in a larger perspective the internal security situation in the northeast because of the insurgencies and all those things this uh, mongla port and chatogram port are important from that perspective also okay so that is the end of the session and uh, in the just to summarize the session what we discussed uh, we, there's a session 3 international uh, international initiative i have taken it as a separate unit because that is a lot of things to be covered here and a lot of important things are also there right so we have covered right starting with the country specific news the international institutions then we covered the, the the fourth section bilateral things and the third section was initiative and the program in the coming out classes also we will try to stick to this uh, structure this is the first month current affairs um, we are also seeing how to make it so easy for you we are not trying to give it a one-way communication as in give it a, just giving it away rather give it a very value-added content to you so the structures will try to maintain these structures and will try to make more value addition to your principal operation uh, so my suggestion will be again to revise your uh, static portion keep revising your static portion um, rest we'll see in the we'll see you in the next session thank you